Hey, what's up, you guys? <laughs> I'm not one to really just like bring unnecessary speculation for no reason. But when I feel like something is a cause of great concern, we just want to be privy to it. I don't know too much of anything, but I do know that something's up. I, I really believe in my spirit that something's up because I don't believe in coincidences. I don't believe things just happen. I think things are intentional. CERN which is a company over in Switzerland that's trying to find the God particle that's potentially going to be making black holes if they mess up, is trying to start or test their particle accelerator on the same day of this total eclipse. Why is that? I want to bring you to their website because this is a good place where we can take a look at their logo. If you look closely, it seems to resemble three sixes to me. You know, I don't want to jump to any conclusions, but it's kind of concerning. Okay, folks, I've been to CERN. CERN is very, very weird. I was actually there a couple of years ago when Russ Dizdar was still alive, well before COVID. So we're there at CERN and we're being uh, taken by a docent who's like basically just parroting what he's been told to say. So we're in this place where the statue of Shiva, Shiva is the Indian god of death, the, basically the destroyer. And I look at the docent and I go, what's this doing here? He has no answer for it at all. Basically, here's the bottom line, and this is something that we need to really delve into here. CERN is built on the site of the ancient temple of Apollyon. Tom Horn, who passed away last year, uh, very untimely, um, wrote about this. So CERN is at this ancient temple. They're going to open up and start using CERN and testing it the day of the eclipse. I mean, what are we looking at here? Is that deliberate? In my opinion, it's absolutely deliberate. Something is going on. Here's what I think is going on. They, the powers that be, are opening up CERN in coordination with the eclipse to open up a gateway, a portal. And that's what I think these sites really are all about. They are going to collide this, these hadron uh, atoms, these protons, these electrons are going to be collided on this day. Now, why in the world would they choose uh, April 8th to do this? I have no idea. But this company is creepy on every level. And I'll tell you why. Not only is uh, CERN in CERN, Switzerland, uh, but I want, I want to show you this because this is cause for, in my opinion, a cause for alarm. And here's why. If you take a look at where it's actually at, okay, a large portion of CERN is located in the territory of St. Genus Poli, probably not pronouncing that right. In Roman times, it was called Apollicum. The town and the temple were dedicated to Apollyon, the destroyer. So this is ancient Horus. This is Shiva. The town Apollyon literally is dedicated to the god of destruction, the god of chaos, the destroyer. And this, and this entire Hadron Collider is, a collider is right in the middle of Apollyon. Now, why is that so important? Because if you go to the book of Revelation, this is what we read. It says in chapter 9, verse 1, 2, and 11, To him was given the keys of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit. And they, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is a bad but it's Man, this, these crows are like so annoying. I'm so sorry, but just keep paying attention. We're going to dive into the Bible after this too, by the way. But keep paying attention. The Greek tongue is named as a polygon. Now, you might not find that just a coincidence, but the fact that they're, they've got this Hadron Collider, which some people, even very, very important scientists, are scared out of their mind of what is going to happen. Now, CERN will tell you on their website, we have no intention of doing anything wrong. Who has intention of blowing up the world? Who has intention of accidentally cracking open a time-space continuum and having something on the other side? Well, I believe they're not telling the full truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So take a look at this quote straight from the director of research at CERN concerning the exact purpose of this Hadron Collider. Listen to this, quote, something may come through dimensional doors at LHC, the Large Hadron Collider, and out of this door might come something or we might send something through it. Ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of CERN 
They tell you it's all for scientific research. No, they're looking for the God particle. They want to know what's holding the universe together. And ultimately, they're trying to get into time travel. They want to open up the curtain of what is behind our dimension and get into the multiverse. This is what they're after. They believe there are multiple universes uh, happening and in, in, in parallel to one another simultaneously, and they want to tear that open. And they know that something has, has the potential of coming through it. Now, we just read out of the book of Revelation that the Apollyon comes out, that the doors of the deep, are the gates are opened up and crazy things come out of the deep. Could it possibly be, would it be that much of a stretch to say that maybe we're the ones that do it? Maybe in our effort in mankind to find a wormhole, to get into Star Trek world, to discover more and more and more and more like the Tower of Babel, that eventually maybe we actually do open up the space-time continuum. We open up the doors of the second dimension and the demonic realm comes alive onto this earth. It's very possible. They just said that's exactly what they know is possible. So for what's really fascinating is evolution is dead. The scientists at the highest level now know there is a spiritual realm. There is another dimension beyond ours, and they're trying to tap into it. And my friends, the last time this happened was the Tower of Babel, and it didn't go over too well. So there's a there's some things I agree with. Let me just preface that with this guy was saying, or both the guys were saying on the video, some things I don't. I don't think time travel is possible. I could be wrong. I just don't think so. But I do think it's possible that an accident could happen, and then we accidentally open up a portal or something to the spiritual realm. I really do think that's possible. He referenced Revelation chapter 9, verse 11. Um, you know what? Let, let's, let's touch on that. It says... They had a king over them. And you're talking about the these demons that are coming out with stingers like scorpions in their tails. They had a king over them, the angel of the abyss, whose name is in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek is Apollyon, that is the destroyer. So let's understand that the spiritual realm is absolutely real, right? This um, this Hindu god Shiva is apparently. Let me go ahead and read this blurb real quick. According to this plaque, by the way. CERN received this from uh, India as a gift. The, on the plaque, it states that it's the belief that the Lord, it's the belief that Lord Shiva, I'm not even going to say Lord, Shiva danced the universe into existence, motivates it, and eventually will extinguish it. So this is where the destroyer comes. Just because these false gods are, you know, quote unquote, false gods, doesn't mean that they're actually not spiritual entities. I do believe in demons. I do believe in the evil that's in the spiritual realm. I do believe that Abaddon, the destroyer, will come as the Bible prefaces, but it's going to happen after the fifth seal. And this is where we get understanding of, okay, do are these seals in order? Are these trumpets in order? Are the bowls of wrath in order? There's a lot of different speculation. I hold the belief that it does happen sequential. You have the first seal, the second seal, the third seal, the first trumpet, second trumpet, third trumpet, you know, the whole nine. So until we see these other things happen, we, we won't need to worry about Abaddon coming out. However, that doesn't mean that the stage isn't being set for this to happen. All right. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and rulers of this dark age in the heavenly places. Ephesians 6. I want us to know where these demons reside. According to my belief, let me know what you guys think. But according to the scriptures, as I mentioned, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But right here, it says we wrestle against the rulers, against the authorities, oh, excuse me, and against powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. This leads me to believe that oh, messing with space and portals and black holes and trying to find the guard particle could potentially open up something in the heavenly realms where the demons have access to. You know, they've been kicked out of their heavenly abode, but they're not d dwelling necessarily with us. I believe that the spirits that are kind of hovering around, lingering around here are the spirits of the Nephilim. That's a whole nother topic. But these demons, the one third of the angels that are kind of like trying to control the world, I believe they're in the heavenly realms, but not in heaven, but maybe in space. I don't know. That kind of, that could change. That could change my belief. But nonetheless, the Bible says the heavenly realms. So I think it's like, up there. <laughs> We're messing with 
some crazy stuff. First Thessalonians chapter five. I want to bring some encouragement before we read about the Tower of Babel. He mentioned that a few times, and I think that's actually very interesting. First Thessalonians chapter five. Let's start at the beginning. This is talking about the day of the Lord. Now, brothers and sisters, about the times and dates, we do not need to write you for you very, first of all, look at how confident Paul is about the understanding of the day of the Lord, right? I think we can know. I really, I really think we can know confidently. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. That verse is mentioned a lot about the coming of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. It will to the people that aren't paying attention. If we continue to read in verse four, it says, but you, it's talking about you believers, talking about me, we brothers and sisters are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. That's what I want us to pay attention to. So and that's why I'm kind of raising this alarm because we don't necessarily need to know everything that's happening. There's so many things happening in the world. We got the war in Israel, the red heifer sacrifice is starting to begin. I'm, I'm still reading and studying about that. All these, this information can be overwhelming, but at the foundation of it all, it's bringing cause of alarm and concern in the body of Christ. And I think that's healthy, right? Jesus says in Matthew 24 to watch, right? See that you're not deceived. I don't necessarily think we have to know everything, but since we're children of the light and not children of the darkness, we can expect that that day will not come like a thief for us. Because you can see the times. We just got to open our eyes and, and see what's happening. And if you have a question, you can ask God. You know, I'm so glad that we serve a God that's faithful to answer our prayers and give us wisdom, right? As, as James chapter one says, if you lack wisdom, verse five, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. This is like shall, this is certain. This is what you can take to the bank. Wisdom will be given to you, but this is the condition. We continue to read in verse six, when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. That's the condition. When we're wanting to come to the throne of grace with boldness to receive wisdom, we got to believe that God will give us wisdom. And we got to believe that we're, we're talking to God. You know, we have to believe that we can obtain wisdom. This is the last time I believe the world was completely united. I mean, it might've been united in other places or, or other times. I'm not entirely sure. I know they were kind of united with COVID, which is kind of weird. But, uh, but let's read about this. The whole world had one language in common speech. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the earth. Let's be in unity with the world, right? Jesus prayed for the world to be in unity, right? To be one, just like he and the father are one. But that was for holy unity. This is a wicked form of, of unity that I believe the Antichrist will nurture. Verse five, the Lord came down to see the city. Let's focus on this too, by the way. I love how we can see the, the plurality of the Lord in here. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they begin to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Nothing they plan to do will be impossible. I believe this is either good or evil. Nothing they plan to do will be impossible. Opening up a, a black hole to reach the heavenly realms might be possible. I, I don't know. It, I, I don't know. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from over there, or excuse me, from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel. Because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there, the Lord scattered them over the face of the earth. I think that's where you get the word babble. Like, oh man, they just babbling over there. I don't, I don't know what they're saying. That's where it comes from. Unity is powerful. I think the devil is very united with his third of fallen angels. They, they really are on the same accord and the same focus. 
we got so much division in the body of Christ, so much disagreements. And it's like, look, I get there's so many different interpretations of things, but let's make one thing clear. We are in the last days. We are emphatically, without a doubt, in the last days. And we just need to wake up. I myself got to make sure I'm good. Like I slip and I fall and I'm just like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? But we got to just say, you know what? There's no more time for slipping and falling. Lord, I'm seeking you with all my heart. We need to come together and really just be like, okay, this is for sure. April 8th is coming. Don't freak out, but just be like, "Uh, I don't know. I'm right with the Lord on April 8th, so I'm good. That's what I want you guys to feel. And it could be nothing. I hope it's nothing. It's probably going to be nothing. But, you know, I don't know. It's just weird. (laughs) It's weird. Let me know what you guys think about this. Like the video. That, That helps out. Share it. Let me know what you think. I love you guys. You have a good one.